Welcome back to the garage, everybody. So tonight we're inside because it's pretty cold out this evening. It's already dark, but um, I think I'm going to start messing with, well, let's pause. So I believe, it, I think it was Saturday or Sunday, sorry, Sunday, I went and picked up another tractor for the channel. And it is, I don't, I'm not sure of the year, but it is a Cub Cadet 72 model. So it just doesn't have, the only thing it's missing, and I think it come optional with it, is the rear fenders. Everything else is there. I got to put a new grill in it, but as far as that, it's complete. It's got the deck, everything. So I'm going to show it to you real quick. That's her. I mean, it's missing the grill. And in these years, it come optional with the fenders. It come with either round ones or with no fenders at all. So I think they just opted out of that. And this model, they opted out of having the creeper gear. The handle would normally be right there, but that's no big deal. So that's the future project. We'll go into that a little bit later. But tonight, I'm going to start on the boys 12 horse color block. I'm going to get the get the oil pan pulled off of it and check the rod bearing in it. Just because it's the end of season and I need to check it just to make sure it's good for next year. So I think we'll get that pulled apart and take a look at it and make sure it's good. And I will probably throw that pan in the trash because it's done nothing but leak this whole time and I'm going billet on the oil pan. So, um, let's get started. I just want to apologize because I sound like crap. I've been fighting head cold and, well, not head cold, but for sure sinuses. It's the first time I've had this plug out in, well, quite a while and it actually looks really good. I don't know if you can see it very well, but it's very nice coppery brown color. So that means she's running like she should. Not too hot, not too lean or anything. So that's a good sign. I'm gonna go ahead and I haven't drained the oil out of this yet. So I'm gonna get it to the edge of the bench here and get the oil drained. going I got the oil drained out of it um, I'm going to flip it over on its top so I can pull, try to pull the paint off this pan is going to be extremely hard to get off because it is it does not have a seal on it it just has uh, RTV so it's going to be kind of a booger to get it off under here in case it leaks. Let the dip stick a little bit. Get these pulled off here real quick. Nine sixteenths head bolts. Somebody's probably gonna call them. No they're not actual nine sixteenths bolts. They're three eighths with nine sixteenths heads. So like I said, this thing is going to be a pain in the butt to get off because I've done this once before. So, and I normally had to use the screwdriver trick. So, let me find a better screwdriver. Alright, I've 
I actually got a scraper tool and a screwdriver. We'll see which one works better. Hopefully I can get this in here. Actually, that was easier than I thought it was going to be. Look at all that crap. It's pretty nasty. It smells pretty bad too. I don't think it has any metal in it. I don't see any shiny stuff. But it's got some goo still in it. See, <laughs> this motor had, I think it was the year before, I actually starved it on oil because when I switched to billet rod, the dipper wasn't as long as a factory one. I don't know if I still have a factory one left, but it starved it on oil and it sent crap throughout it, like all of the bearing material off the first one. So that's probably residual. I tried to clean it up as good as I could from the last time. And then, but I guess it's still pretty nasty. I need to like pull it all apart and put it in the parts cleaner, but there's no, no metal in it. So that's a really good sign. Everything, there was nothing on the magnet drain plug. So I think that's good. Um, I'm not real sure where it was leaking, but I know that pan is warped. Now, the last time I actually put a gasket and gray um, RTV, I think this is some of it up here. Yeah, ultra gray advanced formula gasket maker. Put some of that on one side, and I probably should have put it on the other side, on the pan side, but I didn't. And it still leaked, but I'll get this turned up here. The end play in it still feels really good. It's about where I had it. Cam's still good. It's not all chipped or burned or starved, but still looks like the day I put it back in there. So we're going to pull this cap off if I can get the crank to stop turning and take a look at that rod bearing because I'm going to replace the rod bearings anyways just so it's fresh and ready to go and then I'll once I get the new one in it I'll check clearances and everything but I'm gonna pull that out and make sure it's not scored because if it is we gotta send the crank off so Let's see if I can find I think I don't remember what size they are five sixteenths maybe yep five sixteenths twelve point socket so Also help if the engine itself would not move. I'm gonna get a pair of vice grips and clamp it here so it doesn't keep rotating. All right, that'll keep it from spinning. So hopefully, get these longer ratchet maybe. All right. Actually, could not find my long 3/8 ratchet, so I'm gonna use torque wrench. You don't want to break one loose and fully take it out. You want to go gradually. It's probably not as big a deal as when you're taking them apart, but you can get them out. Dipper is sharp. Okay, let's see what she looks like. Not as bad as what I was thinking it would look like. It's got a little wiping going on. Let's see if you can see it. It's got a little bit of wiping on the edge, but it is not grooved. I ran my finger across it here. It's not grooved or anything. The crank actually still looks really good. There's no grooves in it. And I mean, this is not a pressure lubed 
motor. So this is probably to be expected in a lot of this. There is no copper at all showing in this bearing. So I would say I could have probably ran this again for next season, but I will just go ahead and throw a set in and go with it. Let me spin this around, take these off. See what the other bearing looks like. If I can. Eh, it's not too bad. It's about the same amount of wiping as the other one, so let me spin this around, look at the back side of it. Eh, crank looks good still, so next year, not this coming year. I'm just gonna throw rods in this or a bearing in this again and run it for the next season, next year's season. But I think after uh, the 2019 season's done, um, if we still keep this motor in here, I will have the crank turn 10 under and that way that problem should be eliminated maybe. So um, we'll go 10 under there and we'll put better uh, crank bearings in it will go. I think there's like a 11 ball bearing uh, Setup you can go with these are like eight or nine. I can't remember but just less rolling resistance if it matters, you know, not that big a deal, but Especially for stock class. This is not 100 horsepower. This is 12 horse block. So it's not making anything crazy but Everything looks good in there, so just gonna clean this up. Actually, let me clean this up. We're gonna pull the head off, see what the cylinder balls look like real quick. Still pretty excited about this bearing only being a little wiped on the edges it means it's probably a little tight on the sides of the journal but it's a 1970s model block never had anything done to it ain't gonna do anything to it now don't fix it if it ain't broke right And we already have a leak. Great. Get some more lags. Thought I got most of it out, but I guess I didn't. Okay. Pop this head off here. Okay, so there was nothing wrong. There was nothing wrong with this. I could have left it on there, but I wanted to look at the cylinder walls. Head looks pretty good. It's just burn like normal. There's no real bad carbon buildup as you can tell. Still in good shape. Gaskets not burn out. Um, when I get this gasket off, I'll clean this up and probably paint. It's a little trick I learned. You paint the head, like say black, and then to resurface it, just get you a nice good piece of uh, window glass tape some uh, 320 grit wet or dry sandpaper and that's all you need to resurface these things so once you get going and the more of the black that disappears on the gasket surface means your head's getting flatter so you just keep going until it's all shiny but we'll do that in a later video so um roll this thing down well can't roll it now but okay now this cylinder is probably going to have some Let's see if I can find a light. Can't ever find anything. It'd help if I had more junk, right? Found a light. So this cylinder 
last year I re-ringed this motor and the year before that it was actually bored 20 over and honed so I probably didn't need to do it but I put new rings in it just to freshen it up a little bit year by year new rings and um, honed the cylinder out the best as I could what is on the screen Ugh. hope you guys haven't seen anything on the screen anyways so if you look in here I don't see any real major now you'll see these lines like over here that was from the year before when it starved for oil it actually it didn't groove the block but it I don't know how to say it it appeared like it did but to the fingernail it didn't scratch it so I just honed it back out and that's when I put the rings in it for this time and it's fine now I just you don't want to starve your motor pretty much so um it's got some oil on the piston this thing has always had i guess blow by you could say or else it wouldn't have oil on the piston but um maybe the tolerances aren't as tight as they should be you can see that side has the top has a little bit more room as you can tell up there and it's tighter down here but the, this motor it like puffs a little blue when you first get on it but after that it runs like top so it's a flathead i'm not gonna spend crap tons of time on it but um everything looks good i'm gonna leave it like that and just put a new um rod bearing in it throw a new head gasket on it get it resurfaced and i don't think it'll be too bad i've never overheated this since i've rebuilt it so i don't think it'll be too bad but it is absolutely, let me see if I can get this gasket off here. Let me show you real quick. This has copper gasket seal on it, so it's kind of hard to get off. So, I don't have another head to show you. But, as you can tell, there's no lip on this anymore. This head's been shaved like, I think it was 45 to 50 thousandths, where all of that lip is gone. There would normally be like a pretty good sized lip, maybe as thick as your head gasket or more. Maybe a couple, I don't know. But it's been shaved all the way down when I first got it, so um, if it is warped and I have to do it, it's just going to get shaved anymore. So, um, this has stiffer valve springs in it so i'm not really worried about floating it i've done the play-doh trick to see how much clearance i have between the head and the valves at top dead center and it's fine so i only put valve springs in it because when it was stock right after i put all this together it did float the valves but when you turn over 3600 rpms you're going to do that so don't know how much this thing actually turns somewhere probably 6500 to 7000 maybe ballpark i don't know obviously because i don't have a tag i care less you ain't gonna watch it going down the track anyways you're worried about going down the track so um hadn't let go yet so you just gotta keep them maintained and routine them and um be nice to them really i don't get out there and try to blow it up and i don't overheat it so um yeah i think that's where we're going to stop tonight um on the next project i'll probably go ahead and yank that carburetor off i just wanted to get this head and this old pan off and look at the bearings so i think we're good just get a billet oil pan ordered for it new head gasket mago copper head gasket just to get that much more compression let me know what you think about the new project you're going to see a lot more of this. I don't know which route I'm going to go with this. So, um, yeah. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, hit that thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Comment down below. And maybe next time we'll get to this. So, we'll see you all later. Peace.